Nan. <laughs> <laughs> So today on our uh, Senbang Santai, we have a special guest uh, that I invited to my channel, uh, none other than the founder of Red White Beep, and you know how much we love Red White Beep, this is Mr. Yuva. Uh, I've logged in early, he's not in right now, it's, uh, it's 7.55, our scheduled uh, session with him is, uh, Chicha session with him is 8pm, so another five more minutes, so... Hey, you are. <laughs> hey, what's up, brother? Hey, Melvin. I see you're using a virtual background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me let me all I try my... to I try to make it work, but I couldn't uh, figure out how to get one. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Let, <laughs> let me. Sh well, if we are going real, let me go real. Wait, give me a minute. Let me just off my virtual background just for the fun of it. There you go. <laughs> Not as cool. <laughs> it's messy, but you know lah. It is what it is, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So, hey, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, this uh, I've already started recording already. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, let me just quickly go to the question because I don't want to hold up to your time as so much of your time as well. And also, uh, thank you so much uh, make uh, making time for me, uh, brother. It means a lot. Hey, hey, no problem. Okay, let me wait. Let me just change it. Ah, okay. Now I can see you side by side. Okay. Brother, Yuva, the man, <laughs> the guy who decided to, to create comfort for all of us uh, endurance riders. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Very, flat, very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, seriously, uh, you'd be surprised uh, how many fans you have in Malaysia. In fact, um, this weekend, I'm having another Zoom session with this uh, triplic, uh, Alison, and I was telling her I'm having one session with you, and she said, <gasps> Red white, I love red white, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, hey, but you, you. Uh, but the, but does she use it for running? Because it's quite bulky, right? No, I, she she does. She she has her own uh, triathlon equipment, but when she go for a ride, it's definitely a red white. Ah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's get going. Yeah, let, let's start. <laughs> let's start. If not, uh, because some of sometimes some of my chat I uh, can really uh, pass the hour. And wait, let me just turn on to my notes. Okay, so hello everyone who subscribes to my channel. Uh, so you know that I always want to, you know, have a platform for people who always want to introduce themselves. You know, it's, it's always very good to introduce the people within the industry, not just the normal cyclists, your normal Joes, but to be honest, people in the industry are your normal Joes as well. So I think Yuva is probably one of the most laid back normal Joes in the cycling industry who actually owns a reputable brand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so without stealing Yuwa's thunder, hey, uh, Yuwa, maybe let's introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, how, how, so how do I do this? Do I just talk to people? Or? Yeah, just talk to people. You can talk to me, talk to people, It'll be casual. Don't worry about it. Ah, no okay. drama. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Yuwa. Uh, I, run a, I run a company called Red White Apparel. Uh, we make, uh, well, I make cycling bib shorts uh, and uh, cycling bib shorts that help you ride uh, really long distances. I've been doing this since 2014, so it's been seven years now. And uh, yeah, I think that, that that's really <laughs> all there is to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, say, drop I mean, there, I mean, there's a, I mean, there's a lot more stuff, but uh, I think that's a bit better. Don't worry, don't worry. Let, let me do an easier icebreaker for you, brother. Okay, so here comes the fun part before we go to the boring bit, okay? So I'm going to ask you five personal questions. Okay, don't worry about it. it it's not going to... Oh, no worries. It's not going <laughs> to be a hit in the face, but five uh, personal questions, and you need to answer it. As soon as you get the question, you answer it without, without any hesitance, okay? But don't oh, give your okay, answer okay. too long. Just give it in a short paragraph. It's either yes and no and why within a paragraph, okay? Okay. First question. Do you cook? Yes. But not often. <laughs> so do people like your food? Because it's uh, because it's it's uh, it's much cheaper to eat out. Yeah, I mean I... Singapore lah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, true. because if I yeah, because it's just my wife and me, so two people uh in Singapore I, in Malaysia also actually sometimes it's just cheaper to eat out unless you cook for multiple meals. Yeah. Like three, four meals. 
Okay. Then it's cheaper lah. Way above the the one paragraph at school, still a lot inside. <laughs> okay, second question: electric toothbrush or manual toothbrush? Manual. Why? Uh, simple. Does the job. No batteries. <laughs> True. Okay. Favorite genre of music? Oh, heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> yeah, you have a very small headphones for heavy metal, but <laughs> oh no, this is the this is the course port. Oh no, it's a it's a. Oh, I love course. I I had it. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's a design from the 1980s, I yes. think. Uh, yes. And and it's quite cheap and it's got a lot of bass. Yeah, the the yeah. the 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 sound stage is so very good. I think I had that course yeah. port pro like what 15 years ago, but it broke a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next question. Face to face or Facebook? Wow, both. <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> uh, why? Because face because okay, it depends on if I'm meeting people, I prefer face to face. But if I'm conveying ideas, I prefer Facebook because you can type and yeah. people can read. Okay. So, so it means you 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 do both, uh, but I guess nowadays will be online uh, anyway. Uh, no, these days I use uh, WhatsApp a lot, and when I chat with my friends, I use uh, Discord. Discord. Okay. Next question: shirt or t-shirt? None. <laughs> <laughs> your wife, your wife probably say yeah. <laughs> I mean, Singapore is so hot, right? So when I'm at home, I try not to wear a shirt, lah. It's so yeah, hot. True, true. true. Yeah, then I, uh, yeah. So I had to, I had to turn on aircon just now because I had to wear a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true actually. Honestly, since work from home, ah, I actually went to yeah. Shopee ah, to buy a lot of singlet just because we are working from home. Ah. It really doesn't make sense to turn on the aircon whole day. Yeah, some of your your electricity bill just becomes oh. yeah, skyrocket. Okay, yeah. now the next five uh, question will be more cycling related, like more to this channel, like, okay? So, arrow or lightweight? Lightweight. <laughs> lightweight. But, but I own an arrow bike. Okay. Weight weenie, but with aerodynamic elements. I prefer weight weenie with arrow, with arrow wheels. Okay. Uh, next, what, but 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 there's, there's also a more expensive option of cycling, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, you can you can get arrow and lightweight, lah. Yeah, la. <laughs> <laughs> but you spend a lot. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Tubeless or tube? Oh, tube, clincher for clincher. sure. All the way. Okay. All the way. It's easier to maintain, lah. Yeah, true. Okay. Uh, this or clincher? Rim. Uh, by clincher, you mean rim brake, right? Ah, rim brake. Yeah. Oh, rim brake. Rim brake. Okay yeah. lah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Chris room. Chris room all the way. <laughs> Chris room. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I have, yeah, I, I can go, I go into detail why. Yeah, go, go uh, ahead, go ahead. Why? Why? Uh, okay, so it depends on where you're riding. Uh, in Singapore, for Singapore style riding, most of the terrain is flat. Like, very rare to get more than 200 meters in one ride. So you don't really need to spend more on this. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, right and most and uh, a lot of rim like so I used to ride mountain bike, uh, maintaining hydraulic disc brakes. They're quite maintenance free, but it's just so much more fuss free to just play with the mechanical. And some of something that I'm very familiar with. Mm. But if the industry, the industry is moving to that, yeah. and eventually, you I will have no choice but to buy a, a disc bike, mm -hmm. disc brake bike. Yeah, you're forced eventually. to it. Yeah, I, I, it's, yeah, it's pretty inevitable unless I buy old school lah. Yeah, then you'll be a collector item already. Then, then like yeah. ten, five years down the road, oh look at that! It's a it's a rim brake so bike. So ancient, cool. so retro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay, this uh, this is a good one. Power meter or feel meter? Heart rate meter. Heart rate meter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Heart rate so meter. feel meter lah. But yeah, but uh, but. Okay, so I've never owned the power meter because of cost mm -hmm. and I couldn't justify buying one because I don't race. Mm. But if I had to train for a race and I had to put out certain numbers, then yes, I would need a power meter. Okay. Yeah. 
So, so, but for you right now, it's the few meter lah, heart rate lah, or whatever lah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm becoming uncle, so uncles don't really <laughs> race much. Hey, don't say that way. Okay, now... I'm losing my, I'm losing my hair, you know. <laughs> it, it, but anyway, even people who lose their hair still look cool. Lah. It's just the way how you carry yourself. Lah. I, I, I look at you, I know you have the charisma, lah, brother. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now my favorite question, which I've been saving it for the last one, okay? Which is very cycling related, huh? Uh. Energy drink or energy bar or chendol? Wow. I like chendol, but I cannot drink it out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> You're not <really> saying... <laughs> During a ride or after a ride? You have you normally you do five, six hours ride, you sure can stop my right? <laughs> yeah, oh. Anywhere lah, I mean, I oh, mean, honestly Kendall speaking, lah, even if there's a channel stop, I'll still stop and I'll stop everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I, I understand, but in, but, but in Singapore, we don't really have channel stores. <laughs> I mean, everything is, uh, everything is regulated and inside oh a hawker center, so you must, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when I, but when I, when I, when I, when I do rides in Malaysia, uh, we stop lah for makan. And you know, yeah, uh, the, so Chandel Stop is definitely something you look forward to. Chandel Stop is definitely on the Chandel Stop, Durian Stop, <laughs> Seafood Stop. Yeah, okay. So, we so rode from, I rode from, from Singapore to Malacca, we stopped like 10 times. <laughs> 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 Every one hour stop. <laughs> okay, so, so, so it means between uh, a, 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 a chemical drink or Chandel, you go Chandel anytime. Oh, of course, lah. Awesome. Of course, but but for practical reasons, like when I when I ride and train, uh, I carry a chemical drink, lah. Yeah, it's just it's just easier, lah. Yeah, but you couldn't resist a channel stop, lah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good icebreaker. So now all of you know who is Yuva and what kind of cyclist we did. I think based on your answers, Yuva, I know that you're a laid back person, and right now you just want to santai and chill, lah. Right, all your rides. Yeah. I, I mean, I go. I mean, I ride hard lah, but but I don't mind just easing off and relaxing also lah. Because sometimes you ask yourself, why are you riding so hard? Betul, betul. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Now we know who you are finally, <laughs> and I think it was quite a good icebreaker. So let's go to the to the real uh, reason why we have this call. Uh, so so like I already told you, you are you know, we have a big fan base for your red white beeps in Malaysia. In fact, in my group alone. You know that I cycle with this Swiss group, Swiss group, right? And then you watch my YouTube yeah. before. Uh, our Swiss group is actually a very small group of maybe 30 people. We don't grow our group big because we don't want to commercialize our cycling group. There are a lot of commercialized cycling group out there, but ours is closed. And within our closed group, uh, there are mentally triathlon, mm. Ironman, um, racers, uh, people within the industry, mix of the people within the cycling community. And 80% of them uses a red white beep. Which oh, so it's like 24 people, 25 people easily, use white Easily, easily. And each of them probably own two to three pair. I myself own three pair of red white beep. Actually, actually how do you all find out about uh, red white? Because uh, I do paid advertising, but I've never done it. I've oh. never sent short ads in Malaysia. Okay, that, that's, that, that's that's a good question. Now now you interview me back, so let me let you know. <laughs> so what, what, what happened was, I think it was four years ago, easily four years ago, uh, one of our buddy in our SUS group, Edmund, he actually, I think we saw the review in Cycling Weekly. And the review, oh, yeah. Oh, that was a very, very long time ago. Four or five years ago, and and the review yeah. was review yeah. was good. He bought it, and at th that time, I remember you had like some discounts th th those days, like 20, 30 percent discounts yeah. for a single purchase. So, uh, he bought it, and then he tested it. He loved it, and then he influenced some of us, uh, including one of our Ironman Marcus, and Marcus, uh, one of our strongest writer, like he's done all the Audex two thousand two hundred km. And he told me that he has used every beep that is good, that's supposedly good, from Asus all the way to Castelli and all those beep. And he said that most of him, uh, himself, and even some of his friends who does Audex, uh, don't use those beep anymore. All of them just use red white exclusively. So that is a good testament of your product and you know what you have contributed to all of us. So thank you so much. Ah, 
So that's how. So that's how the word spreads now. Yeah. yeah because um, yeah, because I don't I don't track these these things. It's, it's difficult to track word of mouth. No, no. no. Yeah. So I rely on the people telling me, yeah, yeah, I tried it and I tell my yeah. friends about it. Yeah. So so then 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 when I start doing my YouTube channel and then uh, by the way my YouTube channel is still very new, only one year old, but it's been getting good traction because I like to share, uh, the things that my gang use and Red White Beep when I announced it, uh, I think uh, someone one of my subscri- subscriber told me that one of your team in Singapore told her that there is suddenly an an increase in 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 inquiries from Malaysia. So I assume that time was because I released my YouTube uh, content on Red White, lah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have a I don't have a team. It's just it's just me. Oh, that's so I think me. I was asking, yeah, just me. So I I, I emailed a few customers asking, uh, where is did somebody like talk about my bib shot somewhere? Because I'm seem to be getting more Malaysian orders than normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, uh, because of that, uh, that's why. Um, for me personally, Red White Beep is not a small brand, even though uh, you you run it in your house. But to be honest, I think uh, as a cyclist, uh, I like to of course thank you for creating such a good beat for us, uh, and also making it being very priced competitively, lah. So it definitely does help us a lot, especially in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the the price the price competitive part is uh, it's not easy to do because. Um, okay, so it's difficult to have this price if I have a lot of staff, yeah, and office. So because it's just me, it's possible to to take all the savings and push it into the yeah, true. basically hand it back to the customer, lah. But it definitely can be cheaper. Um, cycling as a whole is still quite expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope as more more and more people start riding, uh, the cost. Uh, the cost can be spread out across a larger number of customers, and then prices will drop. Oh, that 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 yeah. will be awesome for us. Okay, so let's go to the first question. <laughs> I know we answered quite a bit of stuff before even answering any question, asking any question. Okay, so uh, I think I I I some of my, me. I mean, I personally want to know, right? How was Red White uh, born? You know, who was your target audience, and you know what what gave you that uh, like you know the Eureka thing? I want to do cycling shots. What happened? How how did it okay? So so I started cycling when I was in uh, university, lah. Uh, this was two thousand eight, and then I started road cycling in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So back then, uh, uh, you had to have bibs, lah. And as a student, um, the only option you had was you had to buy from uh, China, lah. Um, so back then, uh. Normally, how it happens is Facebook was new, so you had friends on Facebook somehow getting supply from China, and then they'll sell. So I used to buy from buy like that. What I noticed was in every year, uh, I would buy three to four bibs and go through them very quickly because it just wears out. Uh, so when I started working and I wanted to upgrade, I didn't want to spend keep changing my bibs every three four months. So okay, let's I want to buy one or two bibs a year and keep it for a year, a year and a half. What I found out was, unless I'm willing to spend uh, two to three times the current price, so red whites are like red whites are roughly about 130. I mean, you can get the entry bib shot at 85 dollars. Um, if you want that sort of quality, you have to spend at least 150, 160 US or more. This was back in 2011, where prices were low. Prices were higher. Prices are prices are continuing to drop because there's more competition. Uh, competition. So I decided to okay, you know what? Uh, um, let's try making one. And real, really, realistically, at the time, I was actually also uh, tired of working for someone. Uh, I was working as I was working as an engineer, and uh, um, I told myself, okay, if I don't start a business at that age, I was about twenty six, where it's less risky for me to start a business. Then I'm never going to start a business. So I said, okay, let's do something I'm interested in. I want to make bib shots. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but let's start. So then I just started with one product. And the only plan I had was let's just make it and sell it and see how it goes. <laughs> really, a very very bad business plan. But it, you know, it turned out well after seven years. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of perseverance for your on your side, I'm sure. 
So, yeah, so, my, so my, 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 yeah, my replies tend to, I tend to ramble a bit, so. Yeah, this is not matter. Uh, doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> it's, it's casual one, you know, be yourself. There, there, there is no filter here. So, so uh. I'm sure when you started off, it was quite an interesting event, right? So were you like dating then or were you married then? I was dating. Uh, I, was, I was actually dating, uh, uh, but nothing serious. And uh, uh, it's a, so not being married, for me personally at that time really helped because uh, you don't have any big financial commitments so uh, so you can take a lot more risks uh. correct correct yeah so so turning back the clock you um, are you glad you took that risk oh very happy <laughs> <laughs> like I, I i think i think about would i start a business like that today probably probably not because you know uh, you have a house i have a, i bought a house yeah uh, I have a mortgage, got a wife. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a lot of responsibilities now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so not so easy, lah. No, it's true. Like, even even for 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 me right now, uh, I'm definitely you are definitely much younger than me. Okay, I'm a 1980 baby. I'm 41 years old, right? And oh, still young, still young. <laughs> I wish. So, uh, I wish I had your entrepreneurial uh, drive last time when I was young. But you know, like you know, young guys, we tend to just you know we go with the the river, and the rivers always find a job, work for a boss, right? Most most statistic yeah. is like that. So yeah, because it's a uh, it's yeah it's a it's a most. I mean, there's nothing wrong working for someone. In fact, uh, honestly speaking, if I'd stayed in my old job, so I was working as a as a engineer, like mechanical engineer. Uh, by now, seven years, I could be a project manager. By now and probably earning more than what I'm doing right now. But um, no regrets because it's just, it's just a lot of fun to, to run a business if yeah, it works. It is, it is, if it not, is. it's very scary. La. But, but, but again, honestly speaking, the way I look at it, your red white has a brand. <laughs> you have a group of followers, right? Yes. So potentially, and now we know that since last year, COVID, the, the, the cycling uh, community has grown like phenomenally, probably like 50, 60 percent of the blue. Yeah, easily, right. easily. So, so, so I'm sure your business is gonna just continue. Pop, pop, pop. So, so, so it goes then to my next question. You know, how has uh, COVID impacted your business? Um. So. Okay, so every year, on average, I grow at about ten to fifteen percent. Uh, did very minimal. Uh, uh, additional marketing costs. So organic growth. Hmm. What I noticed during COVID was that growth went up a bit. So just a bit uh, was about 18%, 18 to 20%. So it's not, it wasn't like two, three times the volume. It's like what you, what you hear from other brands. Uh, I think that's because uh, Red Bull is not a very well-known brand so when more people come come to cycling they're going to start by they're going to start by buying the more well-known established brands but those are the most visible ones yeah and eventually they will they will get deeper into the sport and i hope that this will translate to sales further down the road mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's usually what happens people will buy the few brands and then eventually mm -hmm. discover red white yeah, I mean, I, I hope, uh, that, which is the point I created this channel as well, actually. When I created my YouTube channel, I also told myself that I want to help like businesses like, for example, yourself, right? Uh, you, you have an yeah. objective, which is to create, number one, a product, which is something that cyclists need, which you feel that there's a gap for that demand, for that product. Yep. And you're actually doing it as a passion. Uh, to a certain extent, it is a sacrifice of your own time, because you know you can earn more somewhere else, but you're still doing it because it's a passion. So, so I definitely, I mean, personally, I, I would definitely support you all the way. So let me know what else you need from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I tell all my customers, you know, just just tell, if you like it, just tell someone yeah. about it. Yeah, Simple. just give a good yeah. review. Then, yeah, that's it. Yeah, as mean, simple as that. Which is how it grew in Malaysia. Seriously, I, and I'm serious right now. Even if any of my subscribers watching this, uh, they're probably be going, to, going to be curious again. You know what's Red White all about? And if you're watching this channel, go to their website, check it out. Trust me, for a uh, 400, this is about 400 ringgit, right? After conversion, 130 Sing. 
uh, 130 US dollars. What's the conversion? Four, about four, four times, right? 450, four, let's say. Four, 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 yeah, about four, four each. Yeah. Uh, let's get for about 460 ringgit, right? Uh, I've, I've, I've tested a 600 ringgit Rafa beep. I've tested an 800 ringgit Rafa beep. I never had the privilege of testing Castelli and Asos, but most of my friends did, and those probably cost 1,000 ringgit. This below 500 ringgit beep is the bomb. Okay, go check them out. <laughs> oh, thank okay. you very much. <laughs> All right, it's the truth. It's the truth. You know, I'm not being paid to, to, to do this, but the actual fact is you did create a very good product for all of us. So, okay, so I'm going to ask you the next question, right? Um, what is happening now? Because if you ask me, I can probably, and you probably know this, in the cycling industry, when it comes to the hardware, which is the bike and components and group set, it is a known fact that it's a shortage worldwide, right? Because yep. of components and raw material is the main reason, right? And also factories closing down. So those is known for, for hardware. How about for, for, for apparels like, uh, you know, what's happening in the industry? Can you give us some insight what's happening? I think for clothing, there's never been a shortage, to be honest, because um, okay, so what I what I know from reading industry reports for US for the US market, especially clothing, there's always been an oversupply. Mm. So because uh, it's quite uh, it's quite easy to make a lot of something, clothes especially, and store it because it's it's very compact, right? Mm. So you can fill a warehouse very easily with it. But what I noticed for for uh, my brand and a few other more well known brands. I do see the the out of stock notice on the website more often. So what's happening? I think there's a lot of there's a lot of supply at the at the lower end and the mid end, but the more desirable brands uh, do seem to be struggling to keep up with demand. Yeah. But I cannot speak for everybody. I can only speak yeah. for myself and try to speculate on the rest. Like. I know for myself it's been challenging because when COVID struck, uh, I was very scared because one thing I thought sales would dry will just go away. So. I'm happy that didn't happen. But the second problem that I had back in back in March, April, May, June, July, for four or five months, my Italian manufacturer was struggling to to produce anything hmm. because Italy had a, had a very bad uh, coronavirus breakout, right? So there's yeah. a, a lot of lockdowns. Cannot go to work. So if you cannot work to go to work, then the factory cannot produce anything. Yeah. Oh, this so, your your, your uh, fabric is from Italy, direct. Yeah, so so how so how my supply chain works is uh, my fabrics are from made by this Italian company called Miti M I T I. What Miti does is they buy the individual yarns, uh, the polyester yarns, and then they they. Okay, so my information may be outdated, but from what I know, they mill the fabrics in Hungary. Mm. They have, in fact, they have a facility there. Then they bring it to Italy, they wash it, they process it, and then they sell it to my manufacturer. Mm who cuts it and, and takes it to Romania to manufacture and brings it back to Italy for QC. So it's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a ding dong supply chain. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's one, of, that's one of the reasons that I chose to manufacture in, in, in uh, Europe, Italy specifically, because from a supply chain perspective, everything stays roughly in one Correct. region that Correct. you can use trucks to drive from one factory to the other. And uh, you know, if my, my pads are made in Croatia, then it can be trucked over to the factory in Roma in Romania to be put into the bib shots and then sent to Italy all by trucks within the EU itself. So oh it's quite efficient from a manufacturing you, standpoint. You, you you are running like the ultimate modern factory, totally online. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh yeah, I mean okay, uh it's I, I get asked about this a lot. Uh but honestly speaking, uh most of the work is done by people on the ground in in Romania and mm. Hungary and and Italy. So these are the, so these are the, the people that have to design and make the stuff. My job is to uh, make sure that the product is is at the specification that I want, the specification that customers want, to provide customer service uh, and to get. And to have the, the the products shipped as fast and efficiently as possible, uh. but without the back end, without people actually, without my contract manufacturer actually supporting me very well, and he's been very and they've been very 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 good like uh, very supportive. So I mean, so here pro tip: if you want to start a brand, make sure you find a very very good manufacturer. Yeah. 
it's difficult to find but if you do find you should work on a relationship because they they really support you a lot i'm sure all the brands have this i mean if even even apple yeah, they have yeah, a very good uh, contract manufacturer yeah 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 no you're talking about the customer service uh, again i want to give credit to you lah um i think red white customer service is amazing i always thought it's it's run by complicated ais and stuff you know because every message just sent out it is replied <laughs> and then I always thought you are <laughs> is a people of 20 AIs running behind the system. <laughs> it's probably it's probably just you, right? <laughs> it's just me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you are that's hardcore. A, that's a there's a there's a 8 hour window where I sleep, uh, but or like in a 2 3 hour where I don't reply because I go on the right, but other, other than that, yeah, other than that, I because I I I work out of my phone yeah, most yeah, of the true. time, so emails come in, messages come in, it's very easy to just Yeah, that that but yeah. honestly speaking that is pretty hardcore that is especially you're saying that you've been doing this for almost seven years uh, that is that is multiple audexes right there eh? crazy <laughs> <laughs> salute you get you get used to it like eventually yeah it becomes yeah. like my yeah. wife my wife complains sometimes when i'm when i'm uh, when we're doing <laughs> something and then like we're watching something on the tv and then she sees me from my phone uh who are you texting ah uh? Why are you texting now? You're watching something. Oh, customer, 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 the customer asked something. Then she like, ah. Oh. Hey, Chop, you you are Malaysian, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was born in KL. Oh, okay. Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah. bahasa tu kan lah. Bahasa boleh. Ah, then, but then, a bit rusty because uh, never used for what? Well, never used for very long. I came that, that... to Singapore when I was yeah. I came to Singapore when I was 19. Mm, so now it's... I'm so about 14. 14. Start... 14 years ago. You studied in Singapore, right? Yeah, I oh. came here for university. So I studied in uh, NTU, uh, Nanyang mm, Technological mm. University. Wow. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I did mechanical engineering. Then I graduated in 2000. Oh, 11 or 12. One of those years, lah. <laughs> yeah. Then I started working. Okay, a bit off topic. Uh, since you studied engineering in 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 Nanyang uh, in Singapore, and and every Malaysians know this line. Eh? Any kid in Malaysia that goes to Singapore and study in Nanyang, ah, uh, he's he's like Tony Stark material, lah. Uh, he's like <laughs> a genius, lah. Uh. So so then I'm going to ask you this. Okay, it's probably off topic, ah. Uh, personal question, now, okay. So after you graduated from Nanyang, which by itself is uh, an achievement, and then you started you. your own company <laughs> doing uh, <laughs> bicycle wrestling pants. What did your parents yes. say, ah? Uh? uh... Honestly speaking, my mom asked me a lot of questions. Uh, is this the right decision? I mean, you have such a stable job. Uh, what about your future? You know, not you know, the normal thing that uh, that, that uh, Asian, parents, Asian parents are. Yeah. yeah, my father was 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 okay with it because he's he he also is a businessman uh, So I so I come from a family of of business people lah. Uh, So he was comfortable with it. Obviously, he asked me the normal questions like, "Oh, are you, are you managing your business well? Is this going? Is it okay?" Then, uh, by then and that, uh, it was okay lah. But you know, fathers lah. I mean, I think yeah. from my experience with my father, he's more he's more chillax lah. Yeah, my mother is more worried lah. Probably <laughs> 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 because your mom knows this naughty boy lah, ma. How lah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my yeah, my growing up, my mom was the was the disciplinarian lah. Like, I cannot rotan a lot lah. Like. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, so tell me, tell me during your younger day, were you, were, were you a rascal or you you just you know you're a good boy who stays in class and study? I okay. So the starting at the starting, I was a rascal lah. So I uh, I used to, I used to get kind of rotan a lot lah. <laughs> but but. Uh, I think when when I started getting older, like when I went to like uh, form, no no, uh, primary, after primary three, primary four onwards, so primary four, primary five, primary six, form one, form two, form three, form four, form five. I was more, I was very like at study, study, study. Yeah. Uh, because uh, because I wanted to, um, uh, I realized that I had a I had a knack for studying. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd, lah. So I the knack for studying, then I became very competitive with other students, lah. And I wanted to I wanted to be the best, so mm-hmm. I studied, lah. Yeah. <laughs> In, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so in other words, your mom did a good job, yeah. 
Very good job. Uh, you, you know the sejarah, te- you know sejarah, sejarah is history lah. So yeah, sejarah yeah. textbook. Yeah, history. Sejarah, sejarah textbook, right? I have to, I have to memorize multiple chapters and then oh, I must speak back to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because sejarah oh. is memorizing. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so she, so she hold the book. Okay, this is chapter one, chapter two, oh, chapter three. Goodness. I must, I must say back to her everything in that chapter word by word. Oh, oh basically generally so what well, so enter 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 the exam right no problem one you can remember <laughs> because if i don't remember right then she'll gain me <laughs> so so this sorry is, okay so to clarify yeah, my mother is a wonderful woman <laughs> she's a she is a saint of a woman <laughs> auntie, <laughs> so <scary>. auntie. <laughs> yeah so, so she, has, she, she actually She actually has a YouTube channel, you know. Are you serious? Yeah, I yeah. What's I will, that I will send you a link. What's she, that she, me? I'll put it. I will send you a link. Oh she has a God. YouTube channel. My mom, my mom is a content creator. Oh my goodness! I, I, so uh, how it happened was uh, she, she 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 cooks a lot. So my mom is a fantastic cook. So oh, wonderful. But you're uh, so skinny. Yeah. You must have stayed Singapore very long. Upper body, like you see my lower body. I'm quite <laughs> I'm quite chunky, lah. <laughs> <la. laughs> <laughs> quite chunky, lah. Uh, yeah, so I'll send you the YouTube channel. Yeah, she yeah, has definitely. a lot of good recipes, lah. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. plug for my mom. Ah. <laughs> oh, auntie, if you're watching this, uh, you did a good job, auntie. <laughs> and to Hello, all mom. the mothers, <laughs> and to all the Asian mothers out there, be you, be you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I know what you say. What, what you're coming at? Because even like for me, uh, during my when I was 17, I mean my studies has. I'm not like you, lah. I, I really, I can never really do studies. Uh. I, I I can't do the books, lah. Uh. But when I was 17 years old, I have a knack of talking and entertainment. Uh. So I actually did clowning when I was 17 years old, all the way to I was 28 years old. Professional clown. Hey, how, how, did you, how did you get into it? Uh, Sunday school, uh, church. I know uh, it's I, a bit off topic, but... <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> interview aku pula. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, I, I actually, uh, I go to church, right? Then I teach Sunday school since yeah. I was like 16 years old. Then my the the headmaster of the Sunday school said that, hey, Melvin, you're so good with children. Children just sticks to you like glue. And they listen to you. Why don't you do clowning? So I did clowning. So I actually went for ah. one year one year clowning course and I got a certificate and I actually became a, a professional clown that for say, to say, right? Then I did a lot of gigs. I, and agents scouted me. I did gigs and I was earning... A good money, you know, clowning. I just work Saturday, Sunday. I can earn like four, five thousand ringgit, and just work on the weekend. Wow. Two days only, eh? Wow, very game, good. Wow, very, very good return on time. <laughs> very good return on time. The best thing is about clowning, right? There's no follow up. Get the schedule. Go there. Perform. Get paid. Go home. There's no follow up. There's no nothing Then, after that. So, so do you have like a? Like a fixed routine, or do you have to come up with a different routine every, every time? Every weekend is different. I remember my my days, right? I'll wake up six in the morning, eat a quick breakfast, do my makeup, and seven in the morning I'll go to could be from Joho, uh, from KL drive to Joho, do a 12 o'clock show. Whoa, Then, you, wait, so that's like a what, that's like a four hour drive, three hour drive. I mean, yeah, drive. more or less that lah, you know. <laughs> Then I will after Joho maybe drive back to KL, do two more shows and a birthday show at night and come home. And then just one day, I do three shows in my clown makeup, yeah. and I already earn thousand five a day. Wow. Okay, what? Well. Oh, but yeah, but worth it. And 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 it is so fun. You get to play with children. What more you want, way? Yeah. What more you want? So so I I did that. Then uh, age 28, I got married. Then I stopped. Then I did wedding photography for 10 years. Also quite successful. But then I stopped. And now I'm doing cycling and YouTube channel lah. So you know. I see a, I see a theme like it's always evolving. People, it's always evolving. People. Yeah, yeah, it's always like that. <laughs> so okay, uh, off topic. Okay, so back to you again. Today is all about Yuva, not Melvin. Hey, by the <laughs> way, yeah, uh, you have a very unique name, uh, Yuva. You know, who who thought yeah. of that and what does it mean? And you know, is, are you oh, okay, Spanish, so my... Italian, or what? No, so my full name is Yuva Raman Viswanathan. Ah, that makes a lot Very long. <laughs> <laughs> so why you? So why you? Be, so 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 the the name you were up. So okay. So my 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 family is fairly traditional. My mom is from India lah. Hmm. Uh, she migrated to Malaysia. Married my, my dad's Malaysian lah. Migrated to Malaysia like long time ago lah. So my name is quite unique for Malaysian because my mom's from India lah. So it's very more 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 like. Uh, More towards uh, India, uh. so yeah, very traditional lah. Uh. It's like it's like first generation Chinese immigrant lah. Uh. 
my first generation Indian immigrant. Yeah. So my name basically means, if I I hope I'm not butchering this. I think it means young rich man. Really, <laughs> I'm not joking. My my name means young rich man. I I don't know why my parents gave me that name. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> Young rich man, okay. Yeah. So Yuva, yeah, Yuva means youth, lah. So okay. in, I'm not sure which language because there's a there's a Hindi movie called Yuva, which also means. Youth. Are you serious? So, I'm on a Bollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, a a, mo- that's a Bollywood movie called Yuva, and I'm it means youth. A, I'm on a Bollywood marathon now. I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> eh. I've not watched the movie, by the way, even though it's called my name. Okay, I'll watch it. I'll let you know. Yeah, so uh, so at home I'm actually called my, my parents call me U Van, so Y U V A, and it's an N added. Mm-hmm. But all my friends in school call me Yuva Yuva because my name is Yuva, so it's Yuva. They say Y U V R, is it like call Yuva lah? Okay yeah. lah, that, that becomes my name lah, I guess. It has it has a nice, I think it has a nice flow to it. Yuva lah, it's a very nice yeah. name. No one, no one in my house calls me. No one at home. My parents don't call me U, uh, Yuva. So technically, yeah. it's your stage name ah. It's my stage name. Yeah. My wife calls me Yuva, so I guess I'm now I'm now Yuva lah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no lah. You know my name right? It's Melvin Tanchi ah, and the last one is yeah. King. You know, K I N G, literally K I N G. And I told my mama when when I realized it's such a weird name lah, mom. Why King? Because she said authority. <laughs> why? <laughs> uh, and maybe it's during those generation time lah, right? The yester years yeah. people like you. Nowadays. Names. Yeah, nowadays the names are all quite uh, quite modern. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but a friend was telling me that uh, I'm sure like ten years from now, uh, all the names we give our children will become very like normal. Really. <laughs> yeah, true. Maybe maybe because last time people want either authority, wealth, leadership, you know, blah 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 blah. Anything that is about prosperity, ah, uh, they'll throw into your name. But nowadays the name is about beautiful, peaceful, joy. You know, it's a bit more modern, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, going back to the discussion, if not, it's going to be a one hour chit chat with you without a tete tete right away. Okay, uh, by the way, don't forget to give me your mother's YouTube link. I'll, I'll, I'll put it down there. I'll oh, give a shout of course, out. of course. <laughs> Because if not, you're going to kind of be balik kampung. Eh. Yeah. Oh, okay. she, she, oh yeah. I, I haven't told her that I'm that I'm uh, that I have a, a podcast. Uh, so I think she'd be very very surprised. Oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah. oh yeah. Also, uh, after this after this interview, right? Give me whatever links you want me to do for a shout out. I'll just put it down there, lah. I mean, normally my talk shows won't get five thousand views, ah, but normally it gets a thousand. But let's see, lah. You, you never know because Red White is definitely a more, uh, global brand, lah. Because I'm sure people do a lot of search on you know who who is Red White or you know review on Red White Dips, right? So maybe uh, yeah, but yeah, but not but not as much as like bigger brands, lah. Uh, that's uh, that, yeah. There's always an imposter syndrome, right? Like I like when people tell me, oh, I know your brand. I'm like, oh, how you know my brand? <laughs> is that is that imposter syndrome, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so now uh, the last question that I have for you is probably this lah, right? Uh, what is your you know what is your future for Red White? You know what's your long term goal? Okay, so the long term goal is is very simple. Um, I want to grow the brand to a level where if people think about Bip Shots, they think about Red White. In similar way, when you think about bib shots, you think about certain brands, lah. Yeah. Uh, but I want to be. I want to try to do it on a small headcount. So, which is a challenge in itself, lah. It means that uh, there are many things that I can do and many things I cannot do. One of the things you cannot do, where I cannot do on a with a small headcount, is have way too many products, hmm. because then you need people to manage those products. And uh, um, yeah, so it's a very simple goal, lah. Every year, every year, I want to keep compounding the business at ten, fifteen percent. So eventually, ten years later, it's like three, four times the size. Yeah. So, so, so. And do you, it without sacrificing quality. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that, that's the reason why, why, why we support you because we know your quality is there. So, but that said, are you are you going to look at your brand as continuing to be a uh, boutique brand? But affordable boutique brand, or are you looking into going towards mainstream sooner or later? Def- okay, so when you mean by mainstream, you mean um, like having, Rafa, uh, like Rafa or whatever. Where? Oh, okay. I see. I see your point. I see your point. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> okay, definitely, I want the brand to be bigger. So if mainstream means more people, it's more visible, more people know about it. Then yes, because yeah, more, every every brand, 
probably more SKUs yeah, every... as well. Um, no, I, I don't think I would want to have too many SKUs because managing a lot of SKUs is a, is a, is a big problem. If you look at, a, uh, at Apple, Apple is a $2 trillion company, but what do they have? MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, <coughs> a bunch of iPads, iPhone, that's it. They used to have a lot more products, but now they trimmed it back, they're expanding it. So every brand goes through a period where you, where you have a lot of products, then you trim it back, and then you start exploring other products and maybe you come back for a while. So, okay, so uh, so if, for those watching, there was a time when I had jerseys, socks, base layers, gloves, yes, bottles. Yeah, yeah a, a, a lot of stuff. But what happened then? So I, we, um, I did that because I was looking for ways to grow the business. Hmm. Have more products, can sell more things, business good, good, right? No, yeah. <laughs> not really. Because when you have a lot more products, uh, you have to spend more money on inventory. So for jerseys, you know, you have like six colors in seven sizes, that's 42 SKUs yeah. that you have to manage and stock well. Uh, and eventually that thing can kill your business start because you have to manage returns, your capital, the way you assign capital to inventory is not efficient. Then you have certain products that customers want, it's not going to be in stock, so you don't make that sale. What I noticed is when I trimmed back my product line tools, just three bib shots at one point. Now it's about four or five thermal lag or winter lag for the for the okay. colder climate riders. Right? Now I have cargo entry. What I found out was um, customers respond better if they are given fewer choices, mm. but the choices are more confident. Mm. So. For, okay, and this just works for me. I don't know about other brands. When a customer comes into Red White, what do they see? They see the first thing they're going to see is this is the best selling item, the bib. Comes in three colors. If they are on a budget, I have something called entry bib shot. That's at a different price point. It's, and it's very specifically for two hours and below. Uh, three hours and below, I think. I, I don't advertise it as this is going to be the most best thing you ever worn at this price because this, you really can't do that. Yeah and you have cargo. So that's really what you have in the brand. So the choices are very simple. You come in, you know what you want, you buy it and it works for you. And then if you like it, you come back more. Hmm. And the item is unchanged uh, and you can keep buying it over and over again, knowing that it's going to be more or less the same, usually better than what it was a few years before. Hmm. Yeah. So I know it's a very, relatively small ambition but i think but my gut feel is it is definitely possible to build a large brand that serves uh niche so so you can be niche okay every customer has as niche 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 needs yeah like every customer needs a comfortable bib shot every customer wants to eventually ride longer distances or aspire to ride longer distances and they're going to want more or less the same item that I'm selling, whether you're an Odex rider or whether you're somebody who just rides us one hour, one hour, two hour rides. So it's about expanding that customer uh, base within that niche. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense because nowadays, uh, I think modern business is very different from traditional business. You talk about traditional basis like old school, old school business like what Mattel, all the toy companies, right? They can have up to about what yeah. two thousand SKUs. Right, but you talk about the more modern, yeah. more modern business is less is more. Like what you say, Apple. For all you know, yep. Apple don't even have products. They're actually just selling <laughs> one thing, and the only thing they're selling is ecosystem. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. They only I can go on and thing. on about Apple's business yes. model. Now. Yes. Like I use an, yeah, I yeah. use Apple products, and uh, and uh, I I did own Apple shares at one point. Uh -huh. Valuation is a bit high now, but that's an entirely different matter. Uh, there's another business that's very interesting that has the same philosophy. It's Costco. You, you heard of Costco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Costco. I mean, in Malaysia, you have something similar. You have used to have, I'm not sure if you used, have, you used to have something similar called Macro Lab. Yeah. So Costco's business model was every Costco warehouse will only have, I think it was two to 3,000 SKUs. Sounds mm. like a lot. But when you compare it to Walmart or, or some of the other grocery shops, they have like 10,000, 12,000 yes. SKUs. I might be off, but the, that's the disparity, like a lot more. But Costco is very simple. They said uh, the reason they keep the inventory relatively small for the shop compared to other, other companies is because every item is, is there for a specific purpose. 
and the customer buys it because it's competitively priced. Having fewer SKUs allows them to drive the cost down and offer customers a right. superior experience with your product. So that's what I'm trying to do with that one. Yeah, which is fair. Fewer choices. Yeah. yeah, fewer choices allows me to manufacture more items in larger volume and to get the price lower for customers. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yes. But, uh, I'm, just looking, I'm just looking at time. We've already done 45 minutes already. Uh, about yeah. 45 minutes. I think I think we have recorded a day. So um oh. <laughs> so Yuva again, thank you so much. I can go your... on and on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I think honestly both of us can just chit chat. We're like brothers here already, right, brother. <laughs> so again, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um I think generally in my personal point of view, your direction in my personal point of view is correct. You know, less is more, your focus. You are, yes, yes. You, 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 are, you are focusing on people who are the endurance rider, right? Yes. And one of the biggest pain points for cyclists is always the backside. And they will always yes. ask endurance <laughs> rider, hey, how you can survive on the bike so long? Oh, I'm using red, white, beat. Yes. Uh, it, it always goes from there. It's always the, yeah, because uh, your jersey can be a bit loose. It's okay. Your, yeah, you... What else do you wear? Your helmet? You, I mean, helmet more or less fits well. Yeah. Um, the other pain point is maybe shoes, but mostly bib shots are the one that people, yeah. I find people complain the most about. Yeah. So, because. you know, I, so I focus on that, on the biggest problem now. Yes. Biggest problem is in a way easiest to sell because once you sell it, they can say whether it's good or not good instantly, right? Yes. Yeah, instantly. So if, if it works for you, great. Mm. Um, so on this point, uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not naive to think that my bib shots work for everybody. I mean, there are customers uh, for whom the bib shots, they just don't like it. La, and, um, and to them, I normally, I explain very nicely, okay, yes, of course, um, it's, a, it's clothing and it's not going to work for everybody, but I do my best to make sure it works right. for the majority. That's, that's the goal I'm trying to do. Well, anyway, the major, majority here in my gang seems to like it, so thumbs up to you. <laughs> so eighty percent uh, of customers in your group, oh, it's still happy. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's actually not bad already, you know, because you must understand. In my uh, group of the eighty percent are actually cyclists who really cycles, and they are from other groups as well, right? And as I as I yeah. talk more to other cycling groups within Malaysia, a lot of them already are wearing red white, right? So so in the way, those people who are using red white are the people who are actually serious cyclists. So those are your influencers anyway. And, and nowadays, traditional marketing is dead. It's all about word of mouth and social marketing. So I think yes. you, what you're doing is right. Yes. Get your get your customers to like it and they'll sell it for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. So I try to, I have this thing called the, uh, um, and this is uh, somebody, somebody actually uh, gave me this idea which was, okay, your customers like it, but if they want to share with their friends, uh, then there must be a way for them to buy as a group. So which is why I have a, I have a team bundle. Uh. Yeah. So it's to, uh, it's to it's to get people to okay. You know, I'm telling my friends I might as well get get together and buy. Okay. So again, uh, thank you, Yuva, again for your time. I I know we said thank you many times already. <laughs> <Thank you so laughs> we much always think the chat is going to end, and then yeah, it's but there's always something else to say, right? There's always something else to say. It's like when you're so comfortable with someone, like, you just order the <laughs> Whole night, lah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, on my side, uh, all the best for 2021 uh, to you and your lovely wife. Uh, also to your family. Uh, I assume your family is back in Malaysia, lah, right? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 and Shalam, lah. Shalam, lah. Okay. Anything you want yeah. to say hi to them or whatever? Any? <laughs> oh no, I know. I, I, I FaceTime them. Uh, actually, I should be. I forgot to FaceTime my mom with this week. I think, yeah. I should, I should FaceTime. <laughs> yeah, you should, before she watches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should, I should, I should. I think I'll call her after this time. <laughs> okay, bro. Hey, thank you so much. And then all the best to you and to all my subscribers. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you all enjoy this. I'll put the description below where you can get red, white beeps. It is highly recommended, not only by me, but by most of my friends. We are not paid to say this because you are don't have the budget to pay us to say this, but we are saying it because it's no. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you, Yuba. I am going to first stop the recording. Okay, hold on, ah. Uh.